Well, four decades ago yesterday, police here in Washington arrested five men for breaking into the office of the Democratic National Committee at the Watergate Hotel. Little did most Americans know it would become a scandal so big it would take down a president. At the time, though, those arrests happened with little fanfare. And soon after President Nixon was reelected, it's what slowly unraveled after his reelection that led to what we now simply call Watergate, otherwise known as the worst political scandal in history. The burglary was one thing, but what's not often discussed is the amount of money Nixon raised just beforehand, about $20 million, which would equal about $110 million today. Much of that from large corporations, illegally, and all of it done so early on to avoid disclosure rules that would soon go into effect. Now, much of that came out in the hearings on Capitol Hill. And after Watergate, 20 corporations were criminally convicted for illegal campaign finance activities. Congress then passed sweeping legislation, campaign finance reforms, that would remain in place for years. The wounds of Watergate, you could say, were deep enough. Both lawmakers and the American people felt action was necessary. But fast forward to today, and many of those lessons have been forgotten. The law is not only done away with, but made much worse by the Supreme Court decision in the case of Citizens United. President Obama criticized it, and for once, Senator John McCain agreed. Here he is on NBC's Meet the Press. I think there will be scandals as associated with the worst decision of the United States Supreme Court in the 21st century. Uninformed, arrogant, naive. Those are harsh words, and as we reflect on the Watergate anniversary and how far we've come since then, I think the better question is to ask, what have we learned? Some would argue nothing at all. Dan Egan of the Washington Post writes, four decades later, there's little need for furtive fundraising or secret handoffs of cash. Many of the corporate executives convicted of campaign finance crimes during Watergate could now simply write a check to their favorite super PAC or, if they want to keep it secret, to a compliant nonprofit group. Corporations can spend as much as they want to help their favorite candidates, no longer prohibited by law from spending company cash on elections. Now, Watergate gave us a few things. The first and only president to resign from office, a bright light shone on hardcore reporting and investigative journalism, like work done by Washington Post reporters Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. And of course, it gave us the word gate attached to every modern day scandal. Well, today, millions of dollars go to prop up campaigns of would-be office holders in secret, and it is allowed. So I think it's important when we talk about campaign finance scandals now to consider that one of them was signed, sealed, and delivered by our third branch of government, the United States Supreme Court.